In the time since GMRS Radio has pulled me into this strange new world of amateur radio, there's one consistent gripe I've had, and that's the technology in this segment is lacking far behind other consumer electronics sectors in one particular area, device integration. Smartphones have become our default gateway to the internet and just about everything else. They've become more than just a phone and a messenger, they are our cameras, our web browser, our entertainment hub, etc, etc. They've also become controllers for our other devices or gateways to information and resources for others. Take for example Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. With these two technologies, you don't have to worry about your car infotainment system becoming antiquated as fast. Since I first started exploring the world of GMRS, I found it to be woefully lacking when it comes to taking advantage of the power of smartphone integration. There's just not a lot out there and there could be so much more. I mean, how great would it be to be able to go somewhere like mygmrs.com and with one touch, download and sync a repeater and its tones to your radio? Well, this degree of integration isn't fully supported, the ability to control radios via Bluetooth is starting to become more of a reality. The folks at BGC have gone one step further with their VR-N7500 dual band mobile and made the entire radio Bluetooth controlled by either an iOS or Android device. When the folks at buy2wayradios.com offered us one to test out, we were more than happy to oblige them. If at any point during this video you'd like to find out more of the technical details or purchase your own, check out the affiliate link in the description below. Now before we go any further, I do need to clarify. The VR-N7500 is a dual band ham radio and it's capable of receiving and transmitting uh, between 136 MHz and 174 MHz on the VHF side and 400 MHz and 470 MHz on the UHF side. As always, you can be any geek off the street and listen, but you do have to be a licensed ham operator to press that push then talk button. While it is technically capable of transmitting on GMRS frequencies, doing so outside of an emergency situation may be construed as a violation of FCC rules and regulations since this radio isn't a Part 95 certified GMRS radio. <sighs> okay. Now that the cover my ass is out of the way, let's get back to it. Even though it's been out for two years, the VR-N7500 is still the most unique amateur radio on the market. There is no faceplate with a display or controls permanently affixed to the unit. The radio itself is a small black box with three status lights, a power button, and a microphone port on the face. That's it. What about the controls? Well, you don't need them when all of that is handled by an app. You can even power it off and on from the app, which means you can really get creative with the out of the way places you can discreetly mount the radio, like how we've put it behind where the ashtray used to go on our third gen 4Runner. I imagine not having to provide an LCD display and various knobs, switches, and buttons helps BGC keep the price down, which means they can then offer this radio with 40 watts of UHF and 50 watts of VHF power for well under $200. That's definitely one of the best dollar to watt ratios currently available. And there was another key feature that drew me to this radio, and that's APRS integration. For those of you not in the know, APRS is a service that sends packets out into the ether via a regionally specified radio frequency. Here in North America, it's 144.390 megahertz. Those data packets are heard by the other stations around you who themselves may also submit data packets. And if those packets land on a gateway station, Ooh, that's a bingo. <laughs> No, that information is then fed into the worldwide APRS feed and can be viewed at places like APRS.fi. For most casual users like myself, there are three things this service offers that are particularly useful. One, it allows you to know what's around you. Many repeaters will post their location, frequencies, and tones on APRS, which can then be helpful if you're in a new place and need to find a new repeater or a repeater gateway. Second. It offers tracking and telemetry information. One use of this feature is keeping track of members in your group. Instead of having someone describe to you where they're at when they're lost, you can just look at their position relative to yours on a map. If you're tracking data packets or making contact with an internet link repeater, your position information will also be monitorable by anyone who cares to look up your call sign, and that's really helpful if you find yourself in an emergency, at least someone will know where to start looking for you. Finally, my biggest interest in the technology is because of APRS's messaging functionality. Using APRS services like SMS Gate and WinLink, 
actually allows you to send SMS text messages and text emails through the radio. This particular little bit of functionality has been one of the major driving forces behind me wanting to get my technician license. The VR-N7500 delivers on two out of three of those features. In recent tests, I was able to breadcrumb my trail to and from a scouting trip and was able to locate and contact nearby VHF repeaters. However, I wasn't able to make or receive any text messages. That functionality is absent from this product. Be it a hardware or a software limitation, I don't know, but it's something that's been written about and requested from the developer for the last two years with no progress made to address it. And while we're talking progress, this leads us to one of my first criticisms of the VR-N7500, and that is, it's woefully pared down iOS app. You can definitely tell this radio was developed with Android as its main focus because to get full functionality of the features like DTMF, you'll need the Android app. This disparity leads me into another criticism. When this radio rolled out two years ago, there was an acknowledgement that the iOS version was lacking, but that it would soon be bolstered up to match the Android one, and that hasn't happened. Which is kind of worrying from an overall long-term support standpoint. There's also the fact that there are many people in this community who are software developers and would gladly step in to help write new apps and software to support the radio and its community. However, the manufacturer hasn't allowed that to happen, preferring to keep development to themselves. Also, there's the obvious criticism about having to rely on two pieces of electronics to communicate. I get it. I don't think that this is the radio for the pending apocalypse because it does rely on a second electronic device to function, and I'm totally with you on the keep it simple stupid when it comes to situations like that. But so far, every day hasn't been the end of the world, and this radio has been amazing for everyday use. The programming is a lot simpler and easier than any other radio I've ever used, and going through and programming a bunch of channels is a breeze. It also has the ability to monitor in the 462 to 467 megahertz range, which means you'll still be able to hear the GMRS traffic, and while you should never, ever, 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 ever. transmit on GMRS with a non-Part 95 compliant radio, we can neither confirm nor deny this radio is capable of transmitting on GMRS frequencies. <sighs> Another notable high point on this radio is the speaker mic. It does have some functionality built into it to control volume or change through the channels you programmed into the radio via Bluetooth. It does feel somewhat substantial and well built and the speaker on it puts out more than enough volume. If that's not enough streamlining and simplification for you, there is a wireless Bluetooth version of the hand mic, meaning you could really bury the install out of the way somewhere. This might also be a pretty good option for someone with limited space considerations trying to set up a base station. So long as you were within Bluetooth range, you could mount the radio somewhere out of the way or closer to the antenna or power source and still be able to talk and make adjustments to the radio from the place you prefer to be talking from. Aside from the goofy new interface, the rest of the radio gets the job done and the reception and signal strength out of this radio are exactly what you'd expect for this rated wattage. No one's been able to tell I haven't been talking on a radio without knobs on it just from the sound of my voice. Is this radio for everyone? Well, obviously not. No radio is. There is a certain set of people out there who I do think will benefit from this radio, and that's not the old school vanguard of stuffy old hams. I think this particular radio opens the door for a newer generation to get into the amateur radio hobby by taking a device most everyone on the planet under 40 already owns and understands well, and then allows them to use it to interface with a form of communication that otherwise would seem archaic and intimidating. Couple that with the fact that it has less moving parts, delivers a radio whose power and feature set they won't soon outgrow, and sells at a price on par with high-end GMRS handhelds it's not hard to see the appeal. How does it do over the long run? Well, we're gonna find out as I'm very happy with it and how it's performed so far in our Forerunner and I plan on keeping it in there for quite a while. In fact, it's now the only radio in that particular vehicle and I'm enjoying having a lot more room for my knee under the dash. Anyhow, I gotta go. Thanks for watching. I'm Matt Kester. Until next time, be good.